Well, Ulysses, not the best evening for the Rays and Taj Bradley as they fall by a score of eight to four against their expansion counterparts. Not a pretty game to stay up very late. But guess what? We also have mailbag uh, voice memo that we're going to share with you guys. So it's going to be a fun episode. Let's get it going right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on social media platforms, Twitter and uh, Instagram at Locked On Rays. And email, reach out to us anytime. Voice memos preferred, Locked On Rays at gmail.com. And before we get into a fun mailbag voice memo question, we do have to address the newsy item of the Rays falling to the fighting Evan Longoria's by a score of eight to four. The Rays fall to 54 and 28 on the year. The Diamondbacks improved to 48 and 32 on the year. It's a case of you can't win them all. And it's a case of Taj Bradley, a rookie pitcher. Sometimes you're going to get shellacked. Sometimes you're the dog. Sometimes you're the tree. And Taj Bradley was the tree in this case, as it seemed to be a little home run derby action as uh, some Diamondbacks players teed off on Taj Bradley. And it's just an example of you have a little bit of missed location, missed command, not on, uh, not as sharp on a certain pitch or two. And, the opposition having some really, really good players, starting with uh, Corbin Carroll going down to Christian Walker and several others. And um, sometimes it's a tough evening for you, but that's why uh, there'll be opportunities for him to bounce back for sure. What we mentioned it on Monday's episode or on Tuesday's episode where we said this this offense is really, really good. And we and they showed it out really quickly. Uh, Bradley had, if you look at the... Um, at the first inning, more often than not, those hitters were on on two strike call um, counts. Yeah, so he just couldn't close them out, uh, so, and, and that that's a shame. But again, to to everybody that's um, that's very angry or whatever they or negative, this is exactly what happens when you have a young uh, pitcher on the mound. These things are going to happen. You know, games are going to get a little bit quicker on them, and and. and and other teams are going to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, you have to, you have to grow through that. And just got to remember that Taj is 22 years old uh, and it's his first year. And these things are going to happen. Like, I don't, I don't see any big wolf factor on it. It's just, you know, I, I like what you said, by the way, um, sometimes you're the dog. Sometimes you're the tree. Yeah. I've never heard that before. I love it. I think that's exactly uh, the summation of what it is to be a young rookie pitcher. That's yeah, a, and getting exactly through right. the trying to get through the first six hitters in that lineup, that Diamondbacks lineup is very, very difficult. And a couple moments that stick out to me, of course, Evan Longoria getting a bomb left center field homer. We've seen that, I don't know, 300 or so times. And, uh, he is now homered against every team in baseball. I think he's the 70th player of all time to be able to do that. So, so you cool. can add that uh, amazing marker to his resume. And then Corbin Carroll, like we talked about on yesterday's show, the talent and uh, amazement that he is of taking a 98 mile per hour fastball, essentially at the very top of the zone and hitting it lashing it to straightaway center a guy of his stature um he's what five nine amazing. five ten five nine five ten they list him at five ten which is which means he's probably closer to five to nine five nine or five eight and three fours yeah yeah no that sounds that sounds like it dude 
yeah, he's he's incredible. And we're going I know we're going to talk about all star um, teams in the second and third segment. Uh, hint, hint. He should be in it. Um, yes. He's impressive. He's impressive. And again, that's a rookie, dude. <laughs> he's like in MVP talks. Um, it's ridiculous what, what that guy's doing. But going back to to the man of the hour, uh, Evan Longoria. Uh, the rugged veteran now, uh, dude, hearing Tantric on the TV and then him just smacking the heck out of the ball to left field. I didn't feel bad about it. Yeah, I didn't feel bad about it. It was cool. Yeah, it uh, definitely brought up some memories. And if that's yeah. the price that you have to pay for uh, an Evan Longoria moment like that, well, so be it. So uh, it was a crappy game. Some- it, yeah. it was a crappy game, so I was just like, "Look, let's let let him have his his fun." The problem was, I would have liked that to happen. Like when the hit happened, it was four zero in the first inning. I'm like, "Okay, this is a throwaway game. It's going to be a clunker." But then they come back, and it's five four, and I'm like, "Okay, this is interesting now." So <laughs> it was maybe at the wrong time for that home run for for me to not be conflicted. But whatever, man. I'm it, it's awesome. Good for him to 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 get a good day at the plate. Hit home run. Good for him. Yeah. Um, and uh, Taj Bradley, of course, the line, not pretty. Four innings, seven hits, seven runs, six earned runs, four homers. Uh, his record is now five and four, has a 458 ERA. While, of course, the Rays did not win this game, they did get to uh, Zach Gallen, who has been virtually unstoppable yeah. at home. Um, and then if we're also going to look at uh, some sh- uh, some sort of highlight uh, for the race. I will note this about him Longoria. I don't know if it's maybe the, the television, the cameras, how things are set up, but he, he looks older than 37. I mean, his face has aged, um, extraordinary. He, to me, looks like he's about 42, 43, 44. Well, you so. know what it is? You know what it is? I, I think, uh, we don't know this because we don't have any, my man's got two kids. Yeah. So anybody that's listening is going to be like, yeah, it's definitely having the kids that has made him. Kind he of looks like a, a president in his second term. Basically. Yeah, dude. Like, that's one thing uh, I've, I've always like been impressed by is like president pictures in their inauguration. And then eight years later, for most of them, then you're, you're like, oh, this is a whole different person. This job takes it out of you. Yeah. Like you learn um, all the, wow. the danger that could be a foot for the country and you learn all the trade secrets and it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, you're like, oh, you had the nuclear codes for eight years. Yeah, that's why you look like that. I get it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> like it's for crazy. real. Uh, um, you know, somebody trying to assassinate you every five seconds. But yeah, you know, it may be Evan Longoria. What he needs is uh, dreadlocks like Jose Siri to, to get a little younger vibe. Yeah, maybe, you know, uh, I think, you know, they kind of do have that celebration in, in the Diamondbacks. I like that, the little wig, the Guriel wig uh, yeah. that they put on. That was kind of fun to, to see him participating in that. Um, it must be so funny, like he, he's the, the veteran and doing that stuff. But I want to go back to something that happened uh, with Trisha Whitaker and Mark Topkin. Uh, they had some time before the game with Longo and they asked him about the number three, how it had never been worn before uh, after he left. And if, you know, if, if he would like to see it retired, if it would bother him to see somebody else wear number three, he was classy, Evan, man. He was just so classy. Yeah. He was just like, look, I mean, it would hurt. I'm not going to lie to see somebody else wear number three. Um, I wouldn't tell them not to wear it uh, or to not do that. Um, he was he was completely honest, very transparent. And when they said, what about retiring your number? He's like. I would say I would not say no. I would really enjoy that to have a number retired in MLB. So uh, I think we all know that that's nobody else is going to wear number three ever again in the race, and that number will be retired as soon as possible. What if Wander Franco was to say, "I want to wear number three from this day forward"? Would then we would. Him? Then we would have to say, buddy, we've done a lot of marketing. You have a five chat, uh, a number five necklace. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. Uh, I I think it's a, a no brainer for uh, the Rays to hold that number three in in high esteem. And I think I know they had also mentioned about the possibility after his career is over, coming back to coach for. I don't know if it's the Rays or another organization, and he certainly doesn't need the money or 
um, anything like that. But I feel like he'd be a really, really good influence or maybe have him, you know, be a special assistant to the general manager or roving coach or, um, you know, having some sort of ambassador like role with the Rays. I think that would be unbelievable yeah. and fantastic and, and much needed going forward as well. So um, always props to uh, Longo for what he's done. Uh, in his career, just try to keep the homers down for the rest of this series if you can. Or at least, <laughs> hey, it it what would be ideal is if the Rays win the next two games and then, you know, Longo still gets his his numbers up. Pete, yeah, that's know? what we want. Win the yeah. series. The Rays need to win this series, but I want Longo to go three for three every time. Yes, that'd yeah. be fair. All right, uh, we have more to discuss. But first, we have to tell you something very important, and that is game time. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find your tickets in the same section and row for less game time will actually credit you 110% of the difference. That's why it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you are set. Then tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through that email of yours. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. And use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. That's L O C K E D O N M L B. Download game time today. Last minute ticket deals, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, Ulysses, let's get right into this voice memo mailbag question. What do we got? Okay, so we have this uh, voice memo from uh, Gareth France. So let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Gareth. I have a question for Lockdown Rays. Who would be your dream all-star team? And who do you think is going to make the all-star team? Loaded, loaded question. Thank you, Gareth, for the question. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, this, is, this is a lot. A lot of info. Uh, yes. where do we start, Kevin? Well, dream all-star team, that would probably take a while to do. And I don't know if, uh, Gareth is referring to present day dream all-star team or mm -hmm. players of the past, all, uh, all-star teams. I'd certainly have some, some names in mind. I'd, you know, obviously like to see, uh, Ichiro in the fold. One of my favorite players to watch Ken Griffey yeah. Jr. I mean, the list goes on and on Evan Longoria, of course, but, um, I think uh, we we have more uh, present day matters to discuss, and that is the All Star Ballot Finals for the 2023 sure. uh, scenario. So, um, I guess should we start and run down from National League to American League who we think will be selected? We can in go the starting position. Yeah, we can go quicker on the National League just because we, we were more uh, of an American League uh, pod here. Uh, so National League, first base, who do you got? I have Freddie Freeman. Ditto, Freddie Freeman. I know Matt Olson is having a ridiculous power season, but you, overall the numbers scream Freddie to me. Yes, I agree. Um, so second base, who do you have? Uh, this is like the easiest question for me. Uh, Luis Arias instead of uh, Ozzy Albies. I mean, the guy who's hitting 400 is not going to make it to the All Star game. Get out of here. A guy with a 945 OPS, get out of here. He needs to be in the All Star game. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, Ozzy Albies, he could have 30 home runs and I would <laughs> still vote for Luis Arias. Like, it is, I will boycott watching the all-star game or voting for any future all-star game. If Arias is not named a starter, I'm just going to be frank with that. Yeah. So I'm there with you on that. Um, third base. This yeah. one was a little bit more uh, difficult because I, I, I hate the legacy thing like, Oh, well he's always had it. So he needs to have it. 
But Arenado has numbers that are better than Austin Riley across the board. So I and besides the defense that Nolan brings is unheard of. Uh, dude has won a gold glove every single year since his debut. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also have Nolan Arenado, and just based on the stats that are presented um, in the balloting without going into all the analytics, but Arenado has a better batting average. He has more home runs. He has notably more RBIs. He has a higher OPS. He has, of course, the the name brand and recognition as well. So I'll go with uh, Arenado in that case as well. Um, moving on to shortstop. Uh, this one... Uh, surprised me because I think if you look at the name power, Lindor and Arcia should be Lindor, hands down. But Arcia, uh, dude, higher OPS, higher batting average. Um, he has really stepped up, exceeded expectations there um, for for Atlanta after Dan B. Swanson left. I think I got to go Arcia. Yeah. There's something in this era of baseball where if you can showcase an average above 300, you don't have to hit 400 like Arias or 399, but there's something that really stands out to me about that and I think is really meaningful and important. And then I'm just going to, I know that RC doesn't quite have the power numbers, of course, in the run producing numbers of Lindor, but he actually does have a higher OPS. So I'll go with Arcia in this case. Also the, um, also the, the fact that the Braves are on a much better trajectory. Mm -hmm. The Mets gives me the advantage, uh, gives me the advantage for him, but I could also see this being a case where you have Mets faithful voting in Lindor, but yeah. I would personally go with Arcia. Yeah, no, I, 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 I also think that the team aspects does uh, matter here, and especially at shortstop. I mean, that's a that's a very critical up the middle position as well. I agree. Yeah. So, um, okay, another up the middle position catcher. Who do you got? This one's tough, man. Will Smith or Sean Murphy? They both have very similar numbers. Um. Dude, like 289 to an 286 average, 13 bombs to 12 bombs, 44 RBIs to 41 uh, RBI, 925 OPS to a 907 OPS. Like, I mean, just pick out of a hat. Um, so if I'm picking out of a hat here, I'm going Sean Murphy. I, I think uh, to come in as a new guy in, in a team that's supposed to be really good and you're doing nothing but produce right away. I think that's very impressive. So I, I, I will take Sean Murphy. Yeah, I agree. I think there's uh, some merit and meaning to that. Uh, I'm also with you on the the Sean Murphy train. And um, he's never been an all-star before and happened to deal with the mess that is the Oakland Athletics franchise. Give him a shot. Let's give him a little cookie here and and give him the, the awarded recognition for continuing that production, not just being a bad player or a good player on a bad team, but, but taking those skills and, and elevating it to a franchise that really needs that production translated. And if I had to guess, I mean, I haven't looked at all the numbers in his career year by year, but I yeah. think he's, I mean, basically having a career year, this is his best year. So he's definitely elevated his game to what the team is doing. So, all right. Uh, now we choose, uh, well, we have one outfielder that's already decided for us, Ronald Acuna Jr. So we have to pick two other outfielders for the National League. We have Mookie Betts, Corbin Carroll, Gurriel, uh, Lourdes Gurriel, uh, and Michael Harris. I believe those are our four options to choose from. So we have to do, uh, choose two of those four. And I think this these two are very um, obvious choices. Just uh, like you look at the numbers and and – it's it's Mookie Betts and, and Corbin Carroll. Uh, the foreshadowing yeah. has come uh, to a close here. Corbin Carroll has to be in. Mookie Betts has to be in. Great seasons by Gurriel and Harris, but um, Betts and Carroll are just above them. Yeah, absolutely. No brainers that Betts and Carroll will be those other two. And yeah, Gurriel and, and Harris having solid, really good seasons, but it doesn't scream, oh my gosh, they have to be all stars. And, yes. You know, exactly. Maybe it'd be a little bit different case if these were real name brand guys like uh you you swap out the name of i mean american league to national league but 
Trout has the numbers of Gurriel, then it's like, okay, maybe we do vote him in in that case. But yeah, um, yeah just not enough there uh, to be named uh, the starter at this point. Now we move on to uh, finally designated hitter for the National League. Who do you got between Bryce Harper and J.D. Martinez? I didn't want to vote for J.D. Martinez, but I have to vote for J.D. Martinez because he's the better player, right? At least at, at least he's having – let me rephrase that. He is having the better season this year than Bryce Harper. I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to – it's hard to um, argue for Bryce Harper when we're talking about DH and you only have three home runs this season and you've only played in 46 games. Right. So yeah, it's, it's got to go to JD Martinez in this case. So yeah. there we go. Uh, that is the national league. Now let's move on to maybe the punchier topic, the American league uh, going with first base, somebody named Yandy Diaz going up against Vladdy Guerrero. What do you got, Ulysses? This is a no-brainer. And I love that the Rays social media team has made it their mission to uh, push as much Yandi content and as much Yandi numbers in everybody's face. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's, it has to be Yandi Diaz. Like, it, it's just, I, it's, Vladdy is just here just because of his name and because the whole freaking country is, you know, voting for him. Um, that's the only reason Vladdy's there. Uh, yeah. it, it should be Yandi's to lose, man. Yeah, I mean, all all the numbers say Yandy Diaz, and um, I know that he's had the power has not been there for the last month or so. But even with that, he still has more homers than yeah. Vladdy. And um, you know, I know Vladdy has uh, quite a few more RBIs. But looking at it full picture, um, I think you'd have to be a, a fool to not vote for Yandy Diaz in this case. And uh, credit to the Ray's social media team for really pushing the bus on this. Uh, that's kind of their job. That's what they should be doing is just hammer, hammer, hammer it down and and get all the other Ray's personalities involved, be it fellow teammates, be it fellow broadcasters. I know Trisha Whitaker has really pushed on Yandy's behalf. So really yeah. get the uh, groundswell for that uh, to make it a reality. And it's working. And it's working because uh, they they did some like uh, percentages. Uh, MLB released how it how the voting is going, and Yandy Diaz is at fifty four percent, and Vlad is at forty six percent. So what they're doing is working. Please, please, please keep doing yeah. that. Keep voting for uh, Yandy. Uh, after the show, I will be uh, getting in touch with my Russian content to create some bots to vote on Yandy's behalf. So we will <laughs> get uh, the ball rolling there, and uh, you know maybe after tonight, Yandy has like. 2.3 million votes. We'll, we'll see if it uh, takes hold there. All right, moving on to second base. Whit Merrifield or Marcus Simeon for the starter? I think this wasn't as close as it should be. It's It has to be Marcus Simeon. I mean, I, the, I mean, the OPS difference, the bat, the batting average is very similar, but then the pop and the RBIs, the the, the defense, it's, it's Simeon. Yeah, it's Simeon. And uh, I mean, this is what he's getting paid to do. The, the, yeah. the Rangers invested in him and so many others to to put on these showcases. So I would think that he'll get the nod there. Uh, third base. I mean, what's crazy looking at the American League, the starters list, the choices. It's like Blue Jay or Ranger. Like, yeah. that's basically what we have. That's uh, what we have. Yeah, point. I don't like it. Yeah, I, don't I know. Like it. Uh, there needs to be more uh, Tampa Bay love in there. But third base, Chapman or Josh Young? I would have to give it to the um, to the young guy, Josh Young. More pop. Um, it's yeah, he's in a in a more of a winning club than than the Jays. I got to give it to Josh Young. I agree. I'm I'm there with uh, Josh Young. And again, it's one of those things where. I, I give the team bump as well, like really elevating yeah. that franchise that has not been good for quite a while. And this is the year that they're really starting to take hold. And I think there adds some value to that. Um, so he, he might be their, uh, you know, their, their version of Evan Longoria, 2020s Evan Longoria for the Texas Rangers there with uh, Josh Young. All right, moving on to shortstop. Who you got? I uh, cannot vote for Bobby Shed again. I'm sorry. Uh, Corey Seager has a one dot OPS. So I know that it's in less games. I understand that, but 
It's impressive, man. I mean, the, the dude's almost hitting 350 with a 10 17 OPS, 10 home runs, same RBIs as Bo Bichette. Uh, I'm sorry. I go Seager. Yeah, it's it's really tough. I'm going to have to give it to Bichette because something that is important to me is how many games have you played through the first half of the season? Have you been there and, and shown up and, and shown out? And in the time that Corey Seager's played, I mean, every game has been a masterpiece, but you've played in like 55% of the games uh, so far this season. So in that case, I will uh, give the nod to um, to uh, Bo Bichette, but I'm holding my nose there. I wish there was somebody <laughs> named, despite the uh, recent issues that have plagued Wander Franco, I still really wish that Wander Franco was a finalist uh, in this case. So I'll go with Bouchette. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, catcher Jonah Heim or Adley Rushman. This one was one of the most difficult ones, but uh, we got to kick it in gear here. So Jonah Heim. Yes, uh, his numbers are better than Adley Rushman, but I, I like the budding stardom of Adley hmm. Rushman. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to go with him, even though um, just the offensive numbers say it should go to Jonah Heim. I'd like to see uh, the rest of the metrics. Um, I think go Adley's going to have so many more opportunities. This might be Heim's one. That's true. You know, but I kind of and I know they're a rival, but I kind of want to see like how many all-star appearances will Rushman get? Will he be on like a y- uh, Yadier Molina type pace? So, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, and considering what he's doing at his age with as little experience as he has in one of the toughest positions in all of baseball as well. All right, yeah. outfielders. We have to choose three. We have Jordan Alvarez, somebody named Randy Rosarena, Adolis Garcia, the oft-injured Aaron Judge, the oft-injured Kevin Kiermeyer, and the oft-injured or somewhat frequently injured Mike Trout. Who do you got? Uh, This one, I got to take people out that are injured. So I'm sorry. Aaron Judge, I can't vote for you when you're not hurt, when when you are hurt and you haven't played for a month. I don't care about the numbers. Like, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, Jordan Alvarez has missed quite a bit of of, of the season. So that makes it difficult um, for me to vote for him. So first of all, got to vote Randy. Randy has to be in. Showman. And the numbers are impressive. Um, then I got to have Adolis Garcia because I mean, the power numbers are really impressive, uh, for him to already be at 19 home runs and 63 RBI. Call me a boomer. That, that speaks to me. I I don't care if it's a team stat RBI. It's, it's still, you still have to get those 63 in. Uh, and then the last one, man, it's either Kiermaier or Trout. I think Kiermaier should Get one. This is Kiermaier should get one just because of the 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 work in the past for his glove, but maybe not as a starter. I, I you gotta, I think I gotta give it to Trout. But can Kiermaier just be in the bench? I think that's the other thing is like eventually once all this takes hold, this is just the starters, and then once you add in the opt outs and everybody else, like Kevin Kiermaier, I would think might get that uh, opportunity. In appearance, if not now, I you know there may not be another chance for him to to get the All Star nod. So yeah, it's tough. You know, with the injuries, um, I'm gonna take Aaron Judd. I well, let me go with it like this. I'll say Jordan Alvarez, and I know he's missed a lot of time, but he's at least played several more games than Aaron Judge so far this season. So I'll give him the nod. Um, Randy or Rosarena. And then uh, always got to see some Mike Trout action. So those are my three. Okay. So, and um, of course, Shoei is already in. So that makes it easy because why yes. not? Dude dude had like 10 Ks and two home runs yesterday. He's insane. He's insane. I mean, yeah. I, I, I am really licking my chops to see what kind of contract he'll merit in free agency. If you yeah. have Corey Seager getting, you know, 300 30 million dollars oh. or whatever it is show is 550 million 600 million like he's in that yeah. like he's going to be the the best paid athlete in the world yeah. for a long long time and it might even be a shorter uh, we're going long here but it might even be a shorter term deal of like five years 300 million dollars <laughs> i mean like, yeah what do you what does he want exactly 
What does he want? Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be all right. Cool. All right, uh, Gareth, thank you for the question. It was hard to answer uh, all the details with that, but um, hopefully you got a little taste of uh, the all-star ballot that is. So, um, again, keep sending those voice memos to LockdownRays at gmail.com. In the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you tomorrow. <music>